Hey guys, I get a call from a good friend of mine if I don't want to go for adventure with him. And of course I say yes, so stay tuned to see what is it all about. So guys, so, this is Marius hey and guys. he will tell us what we're gonna do today and where we're going. Go ahead. So we have, uh, the plan is I have a uh, proficiency check on the Robinson 44 helicopter, which means uh, renewal of my license and my type rating every year annually. Okay. And uh, we will do some practices with the Robinson 44 Raven 2 uh, in the, the terrainous area, landings in the close vicinity to the obstacles and how to get out from there. Uh, also some emergency procedures like uh, out rotations uh, or loss of hydraulic power or uh, uh, stuck rudder pedals. Uh, which mm -hmm. will compromise the controls on the tail rotor. So, it will be interesting day. Okay, so let's like let's let's take a look at it. What actually is Robinson 44? It is four seat light helicopter. Empty it weighed a little bit under 700 kilograms. It is 11.6 meters long and 3.3 meters high. Before we will take off, Mike will perform necessary pre-flight inspection. First thing is check for the leaks under fuel tank, gearbox, hydraulic system. He will also check fluid quantity in the gearbox and the hydraulic tank. Then he will inspect all visible components. Of course, no play or damage is allowed. Whenever he is happy with condition of this area, he will climb up to check main rotor and all main rotor components. Then we slowly move to the tail section where we inspect proper attachment of all parts, then tail rotor, gearbox of the tail rotor and all linkages. Of course there can't be any unwanted friction during rotation, movement must be smooth. After that we move to the cooling fan and to the engine section where we again inspect all components and check the oil level. And by the way, we have here 8.9 air-cooled flat 6 naturally aspirated piston engine which puts out 245 horsepower. And now we move to a very important check. We switch on the main battery and we will check all warning lights through this button in engine compartment. Each button represents different circuit, so we need to be sure that all of them works. And last things are fuel caps. We have one tank on each side, so we need to check them both. Pre-flight check from the outside is done, so we are packing all what we need for the flight. Meanwhile, Instructor and Mikey are continue in the pre-flight check from inside. All seems to be okay, so we are ready for start. And listen to this. Power from engine to the gearbox is transferred through the D-belts. They are loose during startup, so engine can move freely. But whenever engine is on, pilot will activate the clutch, which creates tension on the V-belts, and that makes this weird noise. But don't worry, it's normal. Everything is okay, so we buckle up and we are good to go. View from up here really worth it. Look, I have a small air condition down here. By the way, next to me is Latka, that's Mikey's wife. She's flying on Airbuses, so I'm the only dummy guy who don't know how to fly in here. Flying around is nice, but as Mikey said before, he must pass several tests to get extension of his license. One of them is auto rotation, which basically means that we will lose the engine power and we need to land without it. After simulated engine failure, he must enter to the auto rotation by pushing collective down to maintain rotor RPM. As we descend, airflow spins the main rotor and this slows our descent. When we get closer to the ground, Mikey flares the helicopter by pulling cyclic control, which slows us down to minimal speed of descent. Then he will cash on the helicopter by pulling collective up. This way we can land softly, but since he proved to the instructor that he knows how to do it safely, we continue to the next task. 
Another dangerous situation which can happen is jam tail rotor controls, which instructors simulate by holding the pedals and since they are interconnected, Mikey can't move them as well. Tail rotor is responsible for yaw of the helicopter and stability around the yaw axis. In this point, the only way how he can control this movement is by increasing or decreasing the power of the engine, which will as well increase or decrease torque value. This way he can turn a little, but he must be very careful because every sudden movement can cause uncontrolled rotation. But as you can see, we are in the good hands. And the instructor looks satisfied as well. So we can continue to face the next task. During walk around we inspect the hydraulic components which help pilot to easier control the helicopter. And of course, as every component, it can have a failure, which means he must be tested also for this occasion. After hydraulic loss, which might be simulated by turning off the system, cyclic and collective controls will become much stiffer and it will require more force to control the heli. So he need to be more careful, especially once we're moving very slow or when we got to the hovering mode. And since there is lack of help from the hydraulic, he doesn't have such a feeling in the steering and that's why the landing looks a little bit rough. But of course in such a situation it is okay and we continue to the next task. It is hard to believe but static vertical climb is a very difficult task for a helicopter, especially in close area with a hot environment or when heli reach maximum takeoff weight and I eat a lot so we'll see. And this is one of the reasons why we have a manifold pressure gauge on the dashboard. I don't want to bore you with the technical data so let's say it's power meter of the engine and the limit value is 25 which represents maximum power of the engine. We can go also above this value, but then RPM of the main rotor will slow down, which of course we don't want. So if we get to the point when a helicopter is not able to climb on max power, we must land and remove the weight, for example me, and then jump over the obstacle. But this time I was lucky, helicopter was powerful enough. Next is landing in the hover mode in the close environment, where he must be sure how far is obstacle from the main rotor. And of course it was nice and soft landing. Well, we performed every task several times and we head back to the airport. Then instructor decided to perform one last auto rotation. But this time he made it a bit harder because you need to always land with the wind blowing from the front. And here we simulate obstacle in direction of the wind. So Mikey must perform 360 turn to lose the height and land in chosen area. So we'll repeat the whole process again. He already entered to the auto rotation by pushing collective down. He performed 360 turn. And when we get close enough to the ground, Mikey will flare the helicopter by pulling cyclic control, which will slow us down. And then he will cushion the helicopter by pulling collective up. And this time it was full land and it was very, very soft. And as you can see, instructor is also very happy with this landing. And now it's really time to go back to the airport. Now we just need to park it back in Hunga. So I have wheels. Mikey is cooling down the helicopter. We're 
preparing space for the helicopter. Install the wheels. Here, this slot. And we'll push it inside. Alles okay. gut? Alles gut, ja. Ja, <laughs> So, helicopter is back inside of the hangar. Uh, guys are finishing up some mandatory paperwork. Uh, I would like to say big thanks to Mikey for this amazing adventure. And uh, I will see you on the next one. Bye.